Uh, kia ora, my name is Stevie Hokamo. I am the Toiponeke Māori Arts Resident for 2023. <laughs> so we grew up in Cannons Creek um, in the 80s. Uh, my dad was the Pakia on our street in those days. Um, and we were the fair skin Māori family. There was about, I would say, 20 um, families in our street alone that were um, from our area up the east coast, so we're very much um, brought up within Te Ao Māori, very much east coast ways of living, even though we were in Cannons Creek. It influenced my work in, in many, many ways, um, especially with, um, I suppose, the surface design of my work, um, you know, mixing the two between Māori and Pacifica challenging myself to look further back and, and seeing some of some of those traditions and stories and that too to intertwine within my work. Um, you know, I played sports a lot of my life. That that really has influenced my work as well. Um, just in my approach um, and how I conduct myself as an artist. Um, I put a lot of pressure on myself as well. Quite timely. Apparently that's not a very artist thing to do is um, be very organised and on time but it's you know if you turned up to your game or your practice late you had to run and I don't like running so <laughs> ingrained it quite well. Going up the coast um, all the time as a kid um, and even now you know I just got back from the coast at, um, two days ago and yeah it's just constantly the more I unravel you know within our own whānau's corridor, um, It's just, you know, the, the, the creative process is always like turning over, you know, um, interpreting those stories that I hear um, into artworks um, so that I can, I can put our stories of, of our whānau out there um, and different stories too because, you know, and our, um, you know I come from Tuwhakaere Ora who was great, you know, Ngāti Paro chief but there were many chiefdesses, including his wife, Rua Taupare, who was the chiefdess. Um, you know, I just put a work into the Portraiture Awards, um, and that's named, um, is done after uh, Hene Mauria, which is one of my grandmothers, um, who was the sister of Hene Rupe. So the two of them were great chiefdesses in themselves, and it goes back and back, you know, so bringing those stories out about the females, you know, in, in our whānau and in our whakapapa, um, and how they influenced and the mana that they held. Um, yeah, so that, you know, also the generations to come in my fun, especially the females, can feel proud, but also just generally, you know, feel proud of, of who we are and where we come from and our legacies, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And so all of that intertwined and, you know, kind of learning some of those um, traditions that we've lost um, and learning new traditions that I didn't know about, not new but le for me they're new but you know kind of interacting and with my whānau and um, my aunties that are all kind of in their 60s onwards now you know and, and um, they're, they're more willing to talk as well so yeah it's, it's, it's a journey it's always it's an evolving journey and it's just constantly changing just like my work um, which constantly changes um, because I don't want to be stagnant and I don't want to stay still. So, My papa Ben, um, who was my mum's stepfather, he was a sheep farmer up the coast, so um, every holidays or every time my dad had time off, we would travel through the night in our blue Holden <laughs> with the mattress in the back and um, yeah, stay up the east coast in Te Araroa, um, and my mum and dad would go and work the farm with my papa Ben and so we just we were there you know we were in the old trucks and the paddocks and um, in the river um, over at the motor camp um, they used to show old Bruce Lee movies and there was a ping pong table and a piano in front of the screen <laughs> so you know we had it was quite an adventurous kind of kind of life that yeah so although we were city kids we very much were brought up um, within that um, Māori environment, um, but not speaking the reo as well. Um, so um, even though one of my grandmothers was a te reo teacher, 
Um, the focus was for us to speak English and speak it well, but to be Māori and live Māori um, so that we could navigate both spaces, um, I think, which has really paid dividends in my career um, and allowed me to hold space in both worlds um, and to also be an advocate as, as a fair-skinned Māori as well. Um, and so, yeah, within my work, um, the influences of all those things, um, obviously my work um, speaks a lot about whakapapa, um, my own whakapapa, um, and bringing back some of those stories, um, learning them as well. So, because my mum passed away when I was in my early 20s, um, some of those things were lost. Um, she held a lot of that knowledge as well from one of my grandmothers. So that was all lost, um, you know, because you're just too young to understand about retaining knowledge. Um, so that's a big part of um, my kind of kaupapa now too, is not only through um, what I work in play, but also research and how through that research, being able to gather more knowledge that we can actually, um, you know, audio, through audio, through video, so that we can pass it on to the next generation so that knowledge doesn't get lost anymore. Um, and that's really fun because you can you can connect to the older generations that are still living up, up home. How Tonga was part of Whakapapa back in the day and how people saw objects, you know, as treasures. Um, not materialistic things, but, you know, like Tonga or it, could have, it didn't matter. It could be a, a, a pig tusk, you know, or a, um, like in our family on our wall. We had a piece of driftwood that looked like it had a rose attached to it and that sat on the wall in our house for I think like 40 years because that was something that came from where we came from and so in our family that was Tonga. So through my artwork, you know, um, bringing some of those things back, looking back further at some of the traditions like lei that we've lost and reimagining them in clay so I'm not trying to recreate them but using clay as a medium to to reimagine and and you know kind of revisit those stories, yeah. So we did a wānanga with um, Bay Riddell, um, Wee Taipa, and Mano, the late Manos Nathan, um, and Manos had asked um, a few of us wahine if we wanted to learn to carve, and so I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. And so we were just all standing around him and he just picked up a small piece and a tool and he showed us how to hold it. And then he just made a cut into the clay and it was like, oh, <laughs> it was just that. I was like, that's what I want to do. It wasn't really the making process, it was that marking and that, that understanding of being able to freely as a, as a female um, carve as well, yeah. So that, that was a big, big moment for me. It's, oh, many things. It's rongoa, um, which is something that I didn't quite realise at first. I think um, when I left Toiho and came back to Wellington and started working full time and trying to, to continue to evolve my practice and learn um, and just make, um, there were times when I couldn't, couldn't make, you know, I'd been used to it at Toiho for that year every day you know, um, even in the weekends we were going into school and just constantly making and having the clay in your hands. And so coming back to Wellington um, and sometimes not having that time to do that, I realised that I'd miss it. And then also I'd get like agitated. And so, um, yeah, it's something that I definitely know um, if when you have, it's kind of like what they say about gardening, if you put your hand in the, hands in the soil. So if you think about it, it's like, you're holding the ultimate, so Papa Tuanuku, and, and, and that's the mother, that's, you know, like I say, the OG mother. <laughs> and, you know, she, it's a conversation, it's something that you're swapping energies with, and yeah, it just really grounds me, it helps my mental health, um, and it, it just gives me confidence, I think, to speak. You know, um, I got asked in an interview about, you know, speaking te reo, and I clicked that actually I can't kōrero Māori, but my hands can. So you know we you know so I can I can write in our language on the vessels, and that's through markings and telling our stories through ko fai fai, um, and you know the designs and surface designs that I use.
I've been trying to evolve my carvings. Uh, or my mark, I think I call them markings. Um, I mix Pacifica and Māori designs together. Um, they're actually quite different processes in themselves because one's positive and one's negative energy, um, negative space. So they really do, yeah, there's a trick to making them quite harmonious together. But again, you know, drawing back to my upbringing, um, yeah, I don't know, I just have always had it. It was just something that's always, I suppose you call it the flow, and I've always been able to do that, and I think a lot of it comes back to having quite, um, is it like um, symbiotic kind of relationships with being Māori and being Pacifica as well, and being in that environment and being free to express in that environment. Um, and also the markings, yeah, they speak to um, what I want to say um, like my kōrero, my kaupapa. Um, yeah, and they're my visual language. I say that I've, I've been able to develop over the last um, 10, 11 years um, my own language, um, so kind of like my own code. Um, yeah, they tell my story. Some of it, you, you know, you can identify with. Um, that's very traditional, and it's like markings, like in regards to ko fai fai. Um, but then some of it too is looking at um, Art Deco lines, how we how we put lines on buildings, um, which I think draws back to my graphic design and tech drawing background at school. And also um, my love over lockdown of sci-fi. <laughs> so I started making again after lockdown and realised that a lot of the stuff that I'd been watching started to come out of my work. So I started to try and develop this kind of not contemporary, but more traditional style of markings, meets um, Art Deco, meets sci-fi. So yeah, that's that's. it sounds really convoluted, but it's quite a good, yeah, so I'm kind of working through that. And it's just ways of being able to differentiate myself as an artist, um, you know, because I had studied a little bit um, into tamoko and had been doing a bit, but had to put it aside. And that originally was my focus when I went to Toihokura but finding clay, I was able to use clay as a vessel, but also use it as extensions of the body and, and, and um, working with my design flow and trying to learn and, you know, to accentuate shapes and that, which I think comes back to my graphic design background again of, you know, um, how, how different angles can, um, evoke different emotions consciously and subconsciously as well. I think ever since I was a little kid my dad had a motorbike so we used to go to motorbike conventions um, and I just wanted to stay by the tattooing booths um, and yeah that was just something even back when I was like seven or eight I just wanted to be a tattoo artist. I never knew how I could actually make that happen um, and then when I f um, heard about um, Toi Hokura um, Tamoko program. That's why I decided to leave work and leave Wellington and move to Gisborne. But yeah, I found clay obviously. But um, yeah, just it's natural. It's a natural um, affiliation. It, draw, it just draws me in. Um, and I love that whole idea that um, the first form of Tamoko were the cracks in the earth. So Papa Tuanuku was the first woman, you know, first being to, to have. Tamoko, so I quite like that kind of story that then was able for me to kind of connect the two, the new love of uku and, and then the old love of, you know, um, skin marking, yeah. So I was working um, as front house manager for Pataka uh, and COVID hit. I had been trying to be a full-time artist and work full-time for probably um, I left Toi Hokura in 2012. So yeah, 10 years of working, you know, full on on both, both sides and working out of a room, um, which wasn't overly healthy. Um, so yeah, when I decided that it, I had to make a decision whether I wanted to just stay where I was or actually really give, you know, being an artist a go, because um, I was kind of at a point in my career where, you know, it was a realistic, step to be able to make. I needed a space 
um, and I thought a good way to leave my job um, but have some form of um, security um, around you know paying bills and that was to apply for the residency at Toiponiki, which also I thought was a great way to um, kind of get into the into a studio by myself. I had been in a studio um, with Terence Turner for a little bit and then left. Um, it just wasn't working. Ponamu and Clay all in the same space is probably not the healthiest option. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, once I got the residency, um, yeah, that that kind of got me into the space and it's pretty hard to leave when you are able to have your own studio. <laughs> so yeah, I had the residency, so I did an exhibition through that residency, Ira Tangata Ira Atua, um, which then actually got picked up by the Suda Gallery in Nelson um, for a season show, which was amazing. The residency, Māori residency for 2023 came about um, around some of the changes that were come, you know, were happening, but also um, through my other residency, um, I had identified, and there were some problems that had happened, um, and I'm not one to shy away <laughs> from um, holding, you know, just saying this isn't okay, um, and I'm a big believer that it's our responsibility as older artists that when you are in spaces to help influence and make change for the next generation then we then we should. Um, I would hate to see someone coming out of Massey walking into a space that doesn't function properly and that isn't a safe space for Māori um, or anybody. I think if it's a safe space for Māori and Pacifica then it's a safe space for all cultures because then you're acknowledging mātauranga Māori, manakitanga, you know, all of those things that really hold people to how to treat each other. We asked for Tuiponeke to listen and they have and through this residency they've allowed me space at the table um, and that's another thing that I'm a big believer in too is, is that when you do shake things up and when you demand that there is change and to listen you have to be there and you have to help and you have to help educate and you have to help move it forward but also be there too to still bring things up when you know like when anything changes or evolves or tries to get better there are moments when it does go backwards you know it's like anything it has muscle memory almost like the institution has this muscle memory that it keeps wanting to go back to and so when we can bring it up straight away, you know, it's, it's sorted and it, and it doesn't become something bigger. Yeah, mana whenua especially. I'm not mana whenua here, but I grew up, I was born in Ambred in Porero, which is part of the wider Wellington community. I think that it's our, you know, it's my role too to advocate for mana whenua if they're not in the space to do it for themselves because this is their whenua and I'm... Um, I suppose in a way, not a visitor, but you know, I hold space on their whenua and the least we can do is advocate, yeah. Changes that I've seen is um, a variety of artists coming in, practicing the artists, which I think is huge because it brings a different vibe because you're always busy, but you're always interacting and you're always talking and I think Wellington arts community as a whole is a really vibrant, inclusive space. I think it's very much an individual space in the wider Aotearoa art scene. I think we're really lucky as artists, especially Māori and Pacifica artists, in the community itself, because um, we all kind of share. Um, it's, there's no real clicks kind of that happen, and everyone just is really just celebrating, you know, the creativity and the arts, and so. Um, I think that has started to translate into this space. Um, it's been great with the new management that's come in um, that are diverse in themselves, more females in the institution as well and on staff is great. Um, sets a little bit of a different tone to the building um, and yeah, that's been great. And new staff, you know, new staff on the desk um, young staff that bring in their own energy, 
you know, one of the things I did challenge was that the gallery needed to decide what it wanted to be. Um, an art run, an artist run space or an actual gallery where we could actually have shows that we could be proud of. Um, and I think they've made that decision to be a gallery and I think that it is the only space in Wellington like itself and it's really important because it's a space that those that aren't at that level to, to hit those higher galleries, they have the ability to show in a space that still runs itself as a gallery with professionalism that is looking at bringing people through the door and actually not just using the space to fill it with art, but using the space and the artwork to fill it with people. Yeah, so I like that that change is starting to happen um, and that professionalism is starting to happen within, within it as well. Um, and I'm excited to see what they call the gallery. I think that, you know, that decision that Jamie made to um, name the gallery, I think is really important and that, that, you know, it's all about intentions. And so, you know, many people can question some things that are still happening, but the reality is, is that it's the intention that's there. There's a lot of movement happening and there's going to be a lot of teething problems, but that's why we're at the table as well, so that we can keep pointing those things out because, you know, it's a work in progress and we all have to be a part of it to make it work. Yeah, so specific programs as part of the residency. Uh, one, of, one of the most exciting parts, which was going to happen anyway, but being part of the, being the resident Māori artist, it's just kind of become something even bigger, which is um, a group show that we're having with local Māori Pacific and also a few other artists involved. Um, Te Matapihi, which is our um, a second um, re reiteration of um, a show we did last year um, and it's just a bunch of like-minded um, artists that are all at a certain level in their careers and it's just a way of us touching base with each other and celebrating it you know because I think sometimes we get so focused as artists that we forget to celebrate our successes and then three years on you look back and well it's gone so you just keep moving. So that's quite exciting and to work with um, new exhibition coordinator Jamie Waititi who's going to be great um, and yeah it's just been nice to um, be able to work through a process with with Toy Porneke staff about how we can do things better so the show itself has now become a bit of a guinea pig um, for the background stuff so um, how, how we approach it, how we work with the artists, but also how we, we expect the artists to work with the institution. Um, so it really it's, 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 it's requiring everyone to up their game, you know, um, to really start to, to, I suppose, visualise and to really see what this place actually could be and what it should be. Um, it was great back in the heyday and then I think it had a lull um, and got left behind, um, but it's Wellington, this art scene is screaming out for space um, and, you know, Toi Pōneke and Wellington City Council have an opportunity to create something that will feed this district for, for years to come, you know, um, so that's going to be exciting to do that show. Um, yeah, and there's some programs added to that. Um, yeah, and then also working with the new Māori Arts Advisor, or one of the new Māori Arts Advisors, um, Suzanne Tamaki, around engagement with the residents, um, getting the residents to know each other, um, and yeah, just kind of instilling that um, manaakitanga within the institution itself, um, and just kind of encouraging people to kind of step outside their studios now and again because it can be hard because you get so focused but um, I think that that's going to be um, just going to make the space even better because you know there's only so much that we can ask of in a, of a space to be there for us but you know the residents too need to create, create that vibe and that energy as well so that's going to be exciting. And then also um, Tautoko, the, you know, if they're having um, pōwhiri or um, whakatau, uh, just 
you know, some of those things and any Māori artists or Pacifica artists that come in, just kind of being an open space, um, being an open door kind of policy to the studio to allow people to see a working studio and how it can work, um, that the space is safe, um, both culturally um, and also for, for females, because we are a 24-7 space. You know, so yeah, all of those kind of things evolved and just been um, a little bit more um, aware of what's happening within the wider community scene and creative scene that this can be a hub for people to meet in general, which it used to be back a few years back, which was great. My hopes for this space um, for, for everybody is to be a space that you want to come into to be a destination. Um, you know, I worked in cultural retail for quite a long time and that's something that, you know, you, you focus on. Um, but it can, you know, shift over into other kind of areas and I think Toy Pornik is, is a really individual and unique space in itself, um, especially with the gallery attached to it and so yeah I would really love it to to be a space and a space that people want to show at um, because it's a great you know it's got a great shape to it even in the gallery itself and also um, to be a really inclusive safe space but also to feel that when you walk through the door as Māori that you are proud of being Māori and you are welcome as Māori and also Pacifica as well. As creatives we're all a interesting bunch of people and the one thing we need to know is that we're going to be safe yeah so for me yeah that 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 would be the dream is is for a hum a humming energetic safe inclusive space where everything we do is is at the highest level yeah <laughs>